Father in heaven, please now guide us in this presentation. May the words of our mouths and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Indeed, our friends, we welcome you again uh, to our natural remedies or herbology 101, as we call it, uh, healing naturally with herbs. And we are so thankful you could join us for this another session. Now, we teach from three perspectives. We firmly believe in the Bible, which is our rule of faith and practice, all of scripture. Uh, we believe in good signs, which supports the Bible. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we are not anti-science, but we are anti-false science, which has pervaded the land. We believe in good science, which supports the Bible. We also believe in inspired writings. We believe that God is speaking, God has spoken, and God will continue to speak. We believe in the gift of prophecy, we believe it's one of the identifying mark of God's special people at the end of time. And we also believe that this gift was manifested in a very special way in the life and ministry of Sister Ellen G. White. You may not have heard of her. You may not know about her. I encourage you to read some of her books, Steps to Christ, Ministry of Healing, which is one of her textbooks, Councils and Diets and Foods, another one that we utilize in this medium. I tell you, as someone who has done a little bit of studying as it regards uh, background science and all of those things, and I have come to see that the guidance we have received over the years has been a blessing to the nations. And so without fear or favor, God has spoken. And for that, we are grateful. We want you also to know that the information shared on this line is not intended to treat or diagnose your condition. I am not a medical doctor, and therefore I encourage you to please see your health care provider. Before utilizing anything, please see a naturopathic professional to guide you. Uh, there are those of us who have training and have a background in naturopathic health, and uh, we thank God for that, but we want you to be guided by your health care provider. Well, this morning, we will be talking about skullcap. I don't know if you have ever heard of skullcap. Uh, if you're able to see uh, my screen, you will see this beautiful herb. It's a beautiful, it's a wonder-working herb, ladies and gentlemen, tremendous benefit. It is what we call a perennial. And it grows to about two feet, 60 centimeters, with an erect, many-branched stem and pink to blue flowers. It has this kind of ribbed leaves. And it's well known in the, in the Caribbean, in Native Americans, utilize it. Uh, they took it for menstrual problems. It was used really in the purification ceremonies when uh, menstrual taboo had been broken, skullcap became well known in the 19th century in America as a treatment for rabies. You know, when dogs would bite you, thus they, the folk, they gave it the folk name, Mad Dog. And uh, today, rabies really um, is almost controlled through vaccination, that kind of stuff. Uh, people get that shot and all of that if you ever pick up rabies. But you don't have to, ladies and gentlemen, and you don't really need that. Uh, it's used uh, today. Skullcap is an excellent, excellent treatment, I can tell you, if you've ever been bitten by a dog. Um, it's used as a tonic, and it's used as a sedative for the nerves in times of stress. It has a bitter, slightly a stringent kind of taste, kind of tangy. I, I know skullcap, skull cap, ladies and gentlemen. It is easy to recognize. It has pairs of pink to blue flowers and they have some distinctive seed capsules. So when you look, you can see that skullcap. Um, it, it's grown in the wild all over the US and Canada. It likes very damp areas and it needs plenty of sun. It can be really propagated from the seed or by the root in spring. 
and the aerial part of the skull cap up to three to four year old plants they are really harvested in the summer when in flower so it's one of those plants that um is often utilized when it has budded and um given you that beautiful pink and blue flowers now it has some key constituents in it ladies and gentlemen it has flavonoids uh scutellarin is found in it and bitter iridoids um Catapol, which is very, very amazingly healing on the system, ladies and gentlemen. I was amazed at the power of this herb. And I want you to understand it has volatile oils. It has tannins in there. Now, skullcap, ladies and gentlemen, has been utilized as a sedative for the most part. It's a nervine tonic. So it strengthens the nerve. Those of you who might be nervous, those of you who might be experiencing signs and symptoms of early onset Alzheimer's, uh, you know, Parkinson's or, or any such, it's a great tonic to kind of reinvigorate the nerve. Those men out there this morning who do really hard work, I know some of you really work hard. You are out there building stuff working, very active, and your nerve is kind of shaken because if you use these massive um, instruments and um, power tools, your, it shakes up your nervous system. Well, Skullcap is an excellent tonic for your nerve. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I, I remember, I remember, I don't know if my sister is on and she remembers, I remember a kind of nervousness when I was much younger, and I remember this herb, I, I didn't even know it was skullcap, but you know, mama always know these little things, man, and um, we boil it, that nervous trembling of the hands and stuff, skullcap is very, very powerful, very helpful for those who need to strengthen the nerve. I remember there was um, a lady whose nervous system was just, uh, shattered ladies and gentlemen i was doing an evangelistic series here and um she came to one of the consultations and she said that i i am just nervous and my my, my nervous system is really out of whack lady and it was true you could really see and you could really sense she was struggling and um the lord you know, impressed upon my heart to try. And I had a bottle with the capsule and I said to her, you know, I'll be here doing a series for the next five weeks. You want to try this? And I gave her a, a bottle of skullcap, ladies and gentlemen, so right over there in Florida. And I tell you, brothers and sisters, let me tell you, God moved. I, I think apart in addition to the, the natural remedies that were shared and the laws of health, which we did a thorough consultation. And that's why we tell individuals, make sure you have a thorough consultation, set up your plan or uh, the plan for health, healing and restoration. It is powerful. And I tell you, God broke through mightily. This lady, if, if she was so thankful for what God did, how in the space of five weeks, Brothers and sisters, she stood up before the congregation and she stretched out her hand. People who knew her, how she was shaking and nervy and her, 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 her nervous system, you know, she said she was itching and all kinds of stuff was happening that were nerve related. She could not sleep. And she said, brethren, she held up her hand before her hand before the congregation. And she said, look, Thank God for the angels who have come here. And she held out her hands for about five minutes. The power, ladies and gentlemen, of the natural remedies and the skull cap. The lady experienced healing. It's a nervine tonic. It's antispasmodic. It's mildly bitter if you are not um loving bitter bitter things but it's good it's bitter is good for your blood and for your system no ladies and gentlemen very good for those who are anxious you you tend to be anxious and overwhelmed uh even though not a lot of research has been done uh it has been used 
as a medicine to ease anxiety and stress. There was a small study in 2011 that tested uh, skull cap against placebo in reducing anxiety in 43 non-anxious people. Those taking skull cap showed significantly better overall mood levels at the end of the two weeks of the study. They're still studying um, skull cap and the benefits for the nerve, anxiety, depression, very good herb. Uh, the Native Americans, the Indians, they used and they know a lot about folk medicine and natural medicine because they did not have a lot of doctors. They had the their own, uh, you know, herbalist in the in the community. It's good for you to read about the history of these Native Americans, ladies and gentlemen. There is much out there and how they were able to heal wounds very powerful work, how they were able to deal with scorpion bites, wasp and snake bites and all. They, they, these people were amazing. And you wondered where they got all that uh, wisdom from? I believe it was from God. Uh, the, the Cherokee, they used the, the Cherokee Indians, they, they used the, the skullcap to stimulate menstruation, to relieve breast pain, to encourage the expulsion of the placenta when there was a struggle after birth for the mother to really uh, expel that. They really used the skullcap. As a matter of fact, um, when it was first discovered that it was a nervine tonic, they recognized that it has a deeper action on the, on the nervous system than many other herbs. And for this, it was used for hysteria. The skull cap was used for epilepsy. It was used for convulsion. It was used for rabies, for serious mental illness, such as even schizophrenia. And today it is mainly taken as a nervine tonic for its restorative properties. And it really helps to support and nourish the nervous system. It calms and relieves stress and anxiety. It has what we call antispasmodic action. Uh, useful ladies and gentlemen, uh, where there is stress and worry. A lot of you out there, you're worried and it, it's, it, this stress and worry, it builds up tension in the system and it causes what we call muscular tension. You know, sometimes your, your neck is just stiff because you're stressed. Your shoulders, your back, you're just tense and you are anxious. Maybe something happened to you and each time you are exposed to the stimuli, each time you pass a location, each time you see something, each time you're at a place, your memory goes back and you become anxious. You, your palms sweat or you become confused, you lose kind of focus. This is a great herb for you. This is a great herb that will kind of just help to recalibrate. The properties are exceptional and it is often prescribed on its own or with some other herbs to treat insomnia. It's also given for period pain. So if you're struggling with falling asleep at night, this is a great herb. And I'm taking my time with, with it because it's very, very healing, ladies and gentlemen. I have seen personally before my own eyes, the blessings and benefits of the skull cap. We want you not to overdo it, and we want you to be very cautious that you are taking it under supervision. So you can do the infusion. Pastor, how do we do it? You can do the infusion uh, it, you, for short term for the relief of stress and anxiety. You can take two and a half tablespoons three times a day. You can put that in, in, in water. Uh, or you can just open the capsules. You can get real organic skull cap, ladies and gentlemen. You can open the capsules, put uh, two and a half tablespoons in uh, water, and you have that three times a day. Um, and I'm talking about an eight ounce uh, glass of water. Um, you can also use the tincture to, for nervous tensions and tension and headaches. You can take half a teaspoon with uh, water twice a day. The capsules are good for nervous exhaustion. You can take 200 milligrams of the capsule twice a day. It's pretty good. And um, there are often some other sedative herbs that are utilized with it, the tablets for insomnia.
Ladies and gentlemen, anxiety, migraine, panic attacks, headaches. If that's you, if that's what's happening to you, the skull cap is the one for you. Second herb this morning, second herb this morning, ladies and gentlemen, we are talking about the saw palmetto pigeon. Uh, you may have heard of the benefits and blessings of the saw palmetto berries. They were eaten by the native North Americans and animals. And according to some stories read uh, on seeing the animals grow sleek and fat, the European settlers, they tried the berries and attributed medic medicinal properties to them. The, the saw palmetto, ladies and gentlemen, is, is just um, a small plant palm it's like a palm growing to 20 feet about six meters with fans of yellow green leaves and an ivory flowers and if you're able to see my screen you can see the berries uh on the screen uh it, it the, the fruit pulp was used as a tonic uh, from the 19th century onward and today it's used to help in debility for urinary tract problems and for reducing an enlarged prostate gland. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, the saw palmetto pigeon is propagated from the seed in the spring. It's well known in the Caribbean, uh, from South Carolina. It's well known in, in, in Texas. It is really, it grows in well-drained soil and when ripe in autumn, it's dried and the seeds are removed. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, the saw palmetto pigeon has in lipid uh, content and this lipid content is not just fat content, it has what we call phytosterols and phytosterols are very, very helpful, ladies and gentlemen, uh, for individuals dealing with uh, cancer related it's also very very helpful for inflammation in the system it has your flavonoids it has polysaccharides ladies and gentlemen which are very very helpful uh, towards it, it has anti-inflammatory anti-spasmodic action and it's a diuretic and it's a male tonic now when we are working with individuals who are in large prostate it is one of the herbs we use with great success. It has been proven to be of great benefit uh, to those who have uh, you know, prostatic hypertrophy, uh, benign ones, not really malignant as yet. But even we have seen, in my experience, we have seen when we use the protocol, because there is a protocol for prostate-related uh, issues, we have found that um, this sopal metapigium here has proven to be excellent in uh, bringing down that prostate-specific antigen. Uh, you know, the... the the, 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 the men, you know, your, your, your prostate, your PSA, they talk about the PSA, PSA, it should not go above 0 0.01, is it 25 or 15? Uh, um, but when it start going into five, six, seven and problems, and, and most times, ladies and gentlemen, when the number escalates, it, it's a sign, it's a determinant that there you're having uh, prost prostatic hypertrophy, and um, most times it becomes malignant, which is cancerous, uh, but a great, great herb, a great plant, a great, you know, just help for this condition is the saw palmetto pigeon. Now, its extensive clinical research has been done on it, mostly in Europe, and has shown that a lipid or fat extract of saw palmetto is effective in reversing enlargement of the prostate gland. In the process, the extract reduces urinary retention, eases urine flow, and in many European countries, the saw palmetto extract is a standard treatment for enlarged prostates. It is, it is not clear how the extract of the herb works, but we know that it has um, healing effects on uh, one, uh, reducing the swelling, two, um, reducing the prostate specific antigen in the, in the bloodstream, ladies and gentlemen, helping that uh, PSA to be under control and helping the prostate especially when, when men who struggle with this condition find out that you know you pee and it's a struggle, 
or you are pee after you pee, you find out, gentlemen, that you feel like you still want to pee, or you are retaining urine, or you pee, and after you have completed the pee, you find there is a trickling happening. You know that is not normal. You are to pee, complete pee, then that spinster is supposed to close and there should be nothing. You should empty uh, that um, and you should fully empty. You should not pee and then you having this urge again, oh, I still feel like I wanna pee. And you stand there trying and waiting for it. That's a sign to you, gentlemen. That's a sign to you that you need to check on what's going on. Should be straight flow of the pee and it should stop because there is a muscle there, a spinster that um, closes. And after the emptying of the bladder right there between their urethra coming down, it should close as soon as you're through. And you should not feel that urge. If you're feeling that urge, you know that you need to focus on what's going on there. And there are quite a lot of things that you can do to help uh, some individual, we call it the, the, the micturition. You, you're still micturating some men, you, you pee, and then you are unable to clear the pee fully, or you're still trickling, you know, or you find even after you pee that you wet your brief. That's another uh, thing that's a problem. So we want to share with you the information that can be of great benefit. If that's happening to you, this is a great herb to help you with that urinary retention and help the urine to flow easily. If you're dealing with prostate afflictions or prostate condition, it is very helpful. As a matter of fact, uh, we have used it with the, the root of nettle. Um, the, and there was, there was uh, a, a trial that was done. It's amazing, ladies and gentlemen. Long before we saw these trials, uh, we, we were using these herbs. And um, in the late 90s, they, they did two trials. They gave men with early BPH, a combination of sopal metal and the nettle root. You know what the nettle root is? Stinging nettle. We call it in the Caribbean, shema maca. You, you know what? You, you touch it and it just you know, it, it, it quails up. Um, at one trial compared the herbs with placebo, the other with finasteride, a standard a conventional treatment for um, BPH, as we call it. Results for the herb combination in both trials were very good with a clear improvement. It showed a clear improvement in symptoms in respect to placebo. And similar outcomes, ladies and gentlemen, uh, for those taking the herb or finasteride, um, but those taking the herbs experience fewer side effects. Because you know, of course, finasteride, it gives you quite a lot of challenges uh, with um, other urinary stuff. The very thing that is helping you with, it also individuals struggle with some amount of pain and um, there are other, um, side effects that you do not experience when you are using the saw palmetto. So the, the urinary remedy, it has been used. Saw palmetto pigeon has been used, uh, nicknamed the plant catheter. Uh, this is because it has the ability to strengthen the neck of the bladder and to reduce an enlarged prostate gland. It can equally be useful in treating lower urinary tract symptoms, such as a pain frequency, talked about earlier urgency in urination. It is a useful remedy in cystitis and prost uh, prostatitis, which is inflammation of the prostate gland. It has anabolic action, sopal metazatonic, and is one of the few Western remedies that is considered to be anabolic, meaning that it strengthens and it builds tissues and encourages weight gain. So if you're one of those individuals, you need to put on a little flesh, as they would say, the saw palmetopecia is very good. The, the fruit pulp or the tincture is given to those suffering from wasting illness, meaning you're losing uh, a lot, you're, and you're depleting and you're decreasing. And for general debility and failure to thrive, especially older individuals who get very weak, hectic, and um, very you know, debilitating, bed-bound, um, 
activities of daily life, limited, you know, it's one of those herbs with anabolic action, very helpful. Now, it's also one of those herbs that help or men if you are not producing, it helps with impotence. And if you are dealing with premature ejaculation, it's also one of those herbs that we have used with great success in healing that condition. I, I, I can't forget, I was at an evangelistic series again, and we were lecturing on health and a, a brother came and, and we, we had taught on saw palmetopigium and he got it. And um, you know, he was dealing with some situations and he, he came back and he says, he says, pastor, 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 man, this thing works. And so, um, you know, God is good and there are many blessings out there that he has given us in nature that can help us. And one such is the saw palmetto pigeon. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we, we want you to understand this morning as we come to the top of the hour, this is where I'll pause. If you're able to see my screen, the berries have a powerful diuretic and tonic properties and they are a traditional North American remedy for a wide range of problems. Now, there might be a lot of ladies on this morning and this is a good herb to have in your medicine chest for your husband and um, or men who are on. Um, some of you may not have challenges in this area, but I know it's quite a struggle for a number of men. And here is something that is natural with little or no side effects, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, and women, you can take it too. Yes, you can take it for urinary related uh, conditions. Uh, you can take it too. It has benefits for you and um, great, great, great. It's a, it's a really good, the, the berries, wide range of problems. The dried berries, excellent. The fresh berries, the berries have uh, a vanilla nutty flavor. I, I tasted the berries before and it's just, it's just unique. And, and let me say this to you, I'm planning and I'm preparing a, a series of lectures on um, seeds, plants and fruits for the wild. And it's amazing, ladies and gentlemen, I was just reading yesterday and you got to, when we are through with the series, that's where we are going. Seeds, plants, um, fruits and berries for the wild. Uh, which means if you have to go out in nature, if you have to run to the mountains or run from these cities, or you have to go into the, um, live among the munition of rocks, the Bible talks about the time of trouble and all these things. If you're not a Christian, there is a time of trouble, according to Daniel 12. And there will be a time where there will be a scarcity. And we need to know the things out there in nature that we can eat. There are leaves that you can eat. There are berries that you can eat. Look at the animals and the birds, their, their feathers and how, how, how powerful they sing. Ladies and gentlemen, nature is a great healer. So we will be doing that. If you're looking forward to that lecture, just say yes in the chat. We'll be doing, that's where we're going next. And one of the things that you're gonna learn about is the saw palmetto berries. Very nice, ladies and gentlemen, nutty flavor, um, sweet, uh, kind of tangy taste, but these are things that you can uh, live on uh, for quite some time and they have great benefit. Now, the caution for the, the saw palmetto pigeon as we're at the seven o'clock hour or the eight o'clock hour, ladies and gentlemen, do not use during pregnancy. While breastfeeding, if taking hormonal drugs, if you are dealing with hormone imbalance or any of those things, or if you have a hormone dependent cancer, if you're dealing with that, you, you want to be very, very careful if you're on uh, certain medications with this. Uh, we utilize the infusion of the saw palmetto. You can do the plant itself. You can do the berries. You can do it along with licorice. That's another thing that's very, very helpful. Uh, it's a diuretic for enlarged prostate. You can take three quarter cup, 150 milliliters daily, gentlemen. Great help. You can also do the tincture. Uh, it can be taken as a long-term tonic for debility. Uh, you take one teaspoon with water daily. Very helpful. You also, we, we mix licorice, saw palmetto, and horse tail. Uh, these three herbs, ladies and gentlemen, excellent, capital, my mother would say in Jamaican parlance, excellent for the treatment 
of a uh, you know male related condition very healing on the body so you would have it with um the remedies to uh, two teaspoon saw palmetto, two teaspoon horse tail, one teaspoon licorice, and three quarter cups or 200 milliliters of water. You take a half cup, 100 milliliter as a tonic twice a day. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the, the, the combination protocol that I've used with the lady. Uh, this is the combination that was in those tablets. I told you at the story at the top of the hour uh, that, you know, just amazing. Her nervous situation just went. So saw palmetopigium. May God bless you as you utilize natural remedies for health for you, health for me, health for all mankind. Let us pray. My father, we thank you for the wisdom you have given to men to study these things and uh, for, to look through the benefits and blessings of the herbs. You would never leave yourself without a witness. And even in these 21st centuries, you have provided information for your people. Lord, your people will be destroyed because of a lack of knowledge, but not only that, because we have rejected knowledge. I pray this morning that no one on this line will be called a rejecter of knowledge, but we'll embrace the truth. We'll embrace life so we can be in good health. Bless your people. May we remain in good health. May none on this line be lost, but may all be saved. May none on this line suffer the illnesses and diseases of the Egyptians but may we be in good health, even as our souls prosper. And for every person who shall listen and watch these lectures, may they be blessed, is my prayer. In the name above every other name, the sweet and matchless name of Jesus. Amen and amen.